Hello everyone. I have noticed that when my students first start learning LaTeX, uh, they can create their first document without much difficulty using the many uh, resources available online. But there is one aspect to uh, such uh, document preparation uh, in which they do face some difficulty and that is the creation of the references in a nice automatic fashion. In fact, I have noticed uh, some of my own students uh, creating these reference list manually. Now that is rather unfortunate because one of the biggest advantages of using this wonderful typesetting environment called LaTeX is that it provides a nice systematic way of creating the reference list in a very consistent fashion. So uh, through this example document that I have, ha I have over here, uh, let me demonstrate to you how we can create this reference list automatically in a nice, clean and easy way. So let's get to the bottom of the document where we have this reference list. So you want to have something like this prepared automatically, cleanly and quickly. So what we need for this is basically two things. First, of course, we need the .tech file and we also need a bibliography file. So these are two separate files. Uh, there are ways to combine them together, but uh, for the sake of beginning uh, these things, let's keep them separate. Uh, so on the left hand side, I'm using this terminal. I'm on a Linux machine, but uh, whatever I'm going to discuss applies equally well to uh, Windows. I do not have any experience with uh, Mac, but uh, I hear that Mac's, Mac is based on Unix, so it should be quite similar to Linux. So it should work on all platforms and uh, and whatever I'm doing here, it will work equally well whether you have MicTech or TechLive as your compiler for LaTeX. So uh, let's take a look at the files that are there in this folder. Uh, this is the tech demo folder I have just created for the demonstration purpose. Uh, so uh, we have three files here. Uh, so this points.tech, uh, this is the tech file, uh, points.pdf, which is just this file over here on the right, and the refs.bib file, which is the bibliography file. So uh, let me just increase the font size a little bit. Okay, so uh, we will first take a look at the bibliography file. So I'm using Vim as my editor, but you can use anything that you want, nano, uh, uh, even notepad will work okay so uh, so this is my bibliography file i already have a list of references and please note very importantly that this is the first reference uh, so this is like a database of references all right so the first reference that we have here this is einstein's famous paper or one of einstein's famous papers there is no direct correspondence be, uh, between the order in which it is placed here in this database and the order in which it appears here. Okay, so this can be independently controlled uh, based on what we do uh, and what we write in our .tech file. Okay, so this really is like a database. Okay, uh, it just has the information regarding the references. So this is just for demonstration purpose. Uh, for actually learning how to do this, what I'm going to do is uh, show you that if I have an actual paper that I have obtained by browsing the internet, how I can transfer the information from that paper into such a this this file and then uh, uh, actually incorporate that as part of my document. Okay, so we'll go through this process. Uh, uh, and that will be a complete overview. So let me get out of this file uh, and just take a look quickly at the points.tech file, the tech file actually. Okay, so I'm not going to go into the details of this file itself. The only thing which I will point out here is uh, you note this particular line. Okay, so this one. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit more. This uh, line in highlighted red, uh, backslash use package nadbib. Okay, so I'm using this thing 
uh, it provides quite a bit of flexibility uh, in creating various kinds of uh, referencing uh, reference list citation styles. Uh, so that's good. Uh, let me get to the bottom of this document. So this is the bottom of the document. Uh, we have two lines over here. The backslash bibliography within curly brackets, I have written this AGSM. So this is a particular kind of uh, referencing style or citation style. And the thing that you see over here, you see there's a certain formatting. First, we have the names of the authors, then we have the year name, then we have the title of the paper, followed by the journal name, the volume number and the page number. So this particular style is, uh, is uh, embedded within this AGSM style. Okay, we don't have to get into any more details at this point. Uh, and this next line that you see backslash bibliography refs. So this line basically tells the system which file to refer to for the database of the citation uh, uh, for the database of the citations. So the previous file that we had looked at, that was the refs.bib file. We do not have to write refs.bib here, just the name of that bibliography file is sufficient. So these are the two lines here at the bottom that I'm using. We may put this at the beginning also, no problem, uh, but I like to keep this at the bottom. Uh, and uh, uh, so that's it. So in the beginning, we have that natbib uh, line and here we have these two lines. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to get out of this uh, document again uh, back in the terminal now, but uh, I have already opened in my browser. So let me move to my workspace containing the browser. So I have this paper open in front of me. Okay, so you can search for any paper that you want. Uh, and once you get it, uh, you can transfer this information directly into the, uh, the bibliography file in a very easy way. So uh, what you do is just select the title copy this thing and then go to scholar.google.com and within double quotes just paste the title enter so this is a rather famous uh, paper uh, in the area of lithium and batteries so you see uh, let me just zoom in here you see there is this little uh, site link here. If we click on that, it'll show up with this dialog box. And uh, here at the bottom, you can see this bib tech. So this is the one that we want. Now, if we click on this bib tech, it'll uh, show us this particular format of the information which is associated with that paper automatically. I have not done anything. I've just clicked on those things. Okay, so what we can do is we can just copy it from here. Just control C. And then I get back to my workspace where, where I was working. And then I open, I reopen the bibliography file. Okay, here it is. I'll reduce the font size a little bit. Uh, and then I'll just get to the bottom of this, okay? Or I can just put it anywhere, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I just paste it here. Now you see, all the things are present here, the title, the author, journal uh, name, yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, I mean, this thing is not properly written here. Sometimes uh, Google can mess up a little bit uh but we'll keep it like this for the time being uh we have these things now you please note that these all these things are rather uh i mean fixed information uh, you don't get to play around with this thing uh, <clears throat> so 
see the actual name of the journal should have been nature here but google has kind of messed up here a little bit so you need to apply your human intelligence a little bit and not just depend on the artificial intelligence of google so uh, since this thing is bugging me a little bit uh, what i'll do is i'll i'll replace this thing with the proper journal name okay now i'm happy uh, and we don't need this publisher name actually it's no use okay i save this thing now you please note that this particular thing is referred to as the tag of this reference and this tag also has been created by google uh, automatically we do not need to uh, use this okay so i have my own style of uh, tagging the various papers as you can see here uh, all the all the all the different papers i have tagged in a certain style uh, so i'll i'll do like that okay so it's completely up to us i mean if you want you can call it tiger rabbit anything okay it doesn't matter as long as you remember it and use it in your actual tag file correctly it should be absolutely fine but if you maintain a proper professional system it will it will help you in the long run so uh, i name it like this okay so save it and then i can get out of this thing uh, remembering that the tag for this is actually this and that thing 2011 nature Terrascon. okay i'm going to use this tag when citing this paper from within my dot tag file okay so let me get out of this i'll open the points dot tag file which is my actual tag file and then somewhere uh, within this maybe somewhere near the bottom uh, i'll cite this so let me get to this thing so just before the references page uh, let me put this uh, thing uh, so let me uh, let me write a sentence uh, a very important paper in the area of, uh, of lithium-ion batteries is uh, so we write this as uh, site T and I'll tell you in a moment what this is uh, but I'll first use my tag the 2011 nature Tarascom. this is the same tag that I had used in my uh, bibliography file so let me save this thing okay now uh, we want see after I've saved it nothing really happens here okay now it is possible within the latex system to have auto compilation uh, but that's a slightly advanced thing uh, we don't want to get into that at this moment uh, rather i will discuss this uh, using the steps which a beginner would do uh, and that should be good enough for us now so let me get out of this and now i'll issue a few commands which will help us to compile this thing and if i've done everything correctly it should not give us any error so the first thing is that we we write the pdf let later points if you want you can write points.tick but if you just write points it should be fine so i'll just write it for the sake of completeness pdf latex points.tick and enter okay so as you can see it gives us certain warnings kind of thing okay uh, so when you first learn uh, when you first run pdf latex uh, after you have incorporated a new citation it will give you this sort of warning okay now uh, what we need to do is to run bibtech so so uh, let me increase the font size a little bit here so you can see clearly the command is bibtech and then we write points which is the name of the dot tech file but instead of writing dot tech we write dot aux now uh, you may be wondering what is this aux file and where did it come from so before actually issuing this command let me demonstrate to you what are the contents of this folder currently so so previously we had seen 
that we just had the points.pdf, which is this PDF file on the right. We had this points.tech file and we had the refs.bib file. But after we have run the PDF LaTeX uh, points.tx uh, command, it has automatically generated this points.aux file and of course this log file. So this auxiliary file, this AUX auxiliary file that is created, this is the one which we are supposed to use along with her bibtech command. So bibtech points.aux. Okay, so this is good news. These lines are just like messages. They are not warnings or errors. Uh, it means that it has run properly without any errors, without any problems. Uh, and now uh, we have to uh, use the PDF latex command two more times. So it's just the way that it is, uh, I mean, it works. So we have to run this once and then we have to write, run it one more time. Okay, so uh, actually, uh, if you are on a, on a Windows machine and uh, you are using something like uh, Adobe Reader, then whatever just happened on the right hand side here will not happen. Okay, in fact, if your PDF file is open, you will not even be able to uh, use the PDF LaTeX uh, command. So every time you need to run this thing, you will have to close your PDF from your Adobe Reader and then only you can run it. Uh, however, even on Windows, you can get a similar sort of behavior that I'm getting here on Linux. Uh, if you use a PDF reader, uh, which is perfectly free called Sumatra PDF. Uh, so give that a try. Uh, what I'm using here on, uh, on my Linux machine here. So this PDF reader, uh, which is absolutely bare bones, uh, you don't see any frills at the top or anything. Uh, you can't, can't even see a scroll bar here. So this PDF reader is a, it's a very simple one. It's called Zathura. Uh, if you're on Linux, uh, you can give it a try. But the most important thing which I have not mentioned here is that after we have run our commands on the left hand side in the terminal, this Tarascon paper, paper by Tarascon and Arman, it has appeared here automatically. Okay, nowhere in our tech file did I write any information with my hand using this thing. Okay, the only place where I mentioned this Tarascon is when I use that tag. That is the only manual thing that I had to do. And of course that you have to do because as part of the sentence, it is up to you where you cite a particular paper. Okay, so, so this is it basically. So if you can include one reference, you can include any number of references any number of times. Okay, and let's just take a look at uh, what has happened within the text. So if we scroll up, we can see that we have this sentence over here, uh, which is the one that I had typed in before uh, starting the compilation process. Uh, a very important paper in the area of lithium and batteries is Talascon and Armand. Now, if we just compare with what we have in our actual tech file, I'll go to the bottom. You see the sentence was a very important paper in the area of lithium and batteries is site T, this tag of the citation. Okay, so LaTeX has actually done an important part of our uh, job for us by writing this Tarascon and Armand automatically for us together with the year number, uh, with the year. All right, so uh, this is a very, uh, I mean, very, very convenient way. And after learning this, I believe no student will ever try to do this thing manually.